uh, or at least get inspired. So it really means a lot that you guys are all here today. When that bus goes by, I'll finish what I want to say. Fuck, there's another one. We gotta come up with this. why we're done with this. Like, we need a better venue. Can't do this anymore. I know what it's like standing around 50 people saying, what's the point of all this? I've wrestled with this thought in my head for a long time. And the point is for you all to look at each other, meet a new person, exchange information, and, uh, you know, the more like-minded people that you're around, the better your life just becomes. And my life has gotten so much better. It was already awesome, but it gotten so much better by meeting everybody here. And I love you all. So, uh, I won't get too choked up, but I am retiring. And then, and to help me retire, you're all here, I appreciate it. So, uh, Civil Affairs, you stopped tweeting. Okay, well, Civil Affairs is gonna be the last time you'll see me doing this. And uh, to, to help me close this out, I brought probably my best, uh, my, one of my biggest influences in, in this whole entire movement. And Larkin Rose is, Mark and Rose is like that last red pill that you don't want to take, but you take it anyway. And you're like, I know I'm, like I should read this Iron Web book. And then when you're done, you don't want to believe it all, cause you, but you come to a kicking and screaming, and Larkin just kind of checkmates the argument for uh, you know not being able to delegate authority to anybody but yourself. So please give a warm welcome. Help me welcome this gentleman, Mr. Larkin Rose. Woo! some people might think, the monstrosity behind you is not the source of evil in the world. It is merely a symptom of the insanity of the world. Now, I'm not saying that the people who run this beast aren't evil, narcissistic, sociopathic, murderous bastards, because they most certainly are. I am saying that there is nothing we can do to them which will solve the problem because they are not the underlying problem. The underlying problem resides in people's heads. I would compare it to this. If somebody's brain is malfunctioning to the point that they hallucinate pink elephants, the answer is not an elephant gun. The answer is not to shoot that which does not exist. The answer is to correct their perception of reality so that they see reality as it is. The same is true here. When people say, how do we end the Fed? How do we end the income tax? How do we end the war on drugs? How do we end the perpetual warmongering? I point out all of those are symptoms. None of those are the problem. And they are all symptoms of the same problem. They all grow from the same root. And as a radical anarchist troublemaker Henry David Thoreau said, there are a thousand hacking at the evil at the branches of evil to one striking at the root. And that is the answer. This is a branch. This doesn't matter. When the root is gone, when we identify the root and rip it the fuck out, this will <laughs> is that the problem resides inside the heads of most people and it is so tempting to want an outside enemy to point at and to scream at and try to do something to and it's really uncomfortable to rethink your own thought process and wonder maybe I'm still adding to the problem and I speak as one who for years and years and years was still adding to the problem and didn't know it I was politically active I believed in government I believed in voting I believed in all that Hocus pocus bizarre authoritarian rituals, and I thought I was doing something good. I thought I was doing something useful. So this part may sound a little blunt, it may sound a little harsh. Um, I'll get a little biblical on you, despite the fact that I'm a heathen. Before you go trying to take the moat out of your neighbor's eye, check the beams in your own. So here's a little beam test for you. If you look at politicians and you see lawmakers, you do not perceive reality as it is. You cannot fix the world because you are still a carrier of the disease of authoritarianism. Woo! If you look at the people who wear badges and funny uniforms and you see law enforcers, you do not see reality as it is. You cannot fix the world because you are still a carrier of the disease. If you still feel a moral obligation to pay tribute 
to a ruling class, and you think of that as your fair share of paying back to society, you do not see reality as it is, and you cannot fix the world. If you still feel the slightest shred of guilt at voluntarily trading with another human being without giving a cut to the bastards who work in that building, you do not yet see reality as it is, and you cannot fix the world. Paying the arbitrary bullshit that comes out of Washington, you do not see reality as it is. If you do not recognize them as parasites and liars and thieves and nothing else, then you don't yet see reality as it is, and you can't yet fix the world. If you think the black market is a bad thing, if you think working under the table is a bad, immoral thing, you are a slave. You do not see reality as it is, and you cannot free anybody else. And what it comes down to is, before you can free another mind, you have to make sure your own mind is free. Before we can do away with the symptoms, we have to do away with the problem. And it's 100% mental. And I would point out, I was a, a carrier of the disease of authoritarianism for many years. The people who believe it, it's not because they're evil, it's not because they're malicious, it's not because they're stupid. It's because all of our lives we are surrounded by that lie. And that lie is contagious. And it burrows into our psyches. And it is trained into us by the education system, uh, by most of our parents, uh, by the indoctrination system known as the media, by the government, of course. So it's not that people are evil, it's not that all these people out here who believe in paying their taxes, paying tribute to a bunch of parasites, they're not evil, they're not malicious, they're not stupid, but the contagion that is authoritarianism has infected their brain. The good news is that the cure, which is self-ownership and voluntarism, is even more contagious. Right now we're outnumbered, but it is spreading, and it is spreading fast, and it is really fun to see how quickly people's minds are being free, and that has to happen before your body is going to be free. What we need is more people who are ready to embrace the label lawbreaker. Steal, people, steal things and kill people, you all know what I mean. I mean, disobey the arbitrary crap that comes out of Washington with no shame, no guilt, and no hesitation to tell other people, no, I do not pay tribute to most evil gang in the world. I have no obligation to. I have an obligation to go as far out of my way as I possibly can to avoid funding them, to avoid funding these bastards. police state lunacy going on and they they think that's a bad sign and obviously in the short term it can't be a bad sign because there's a lot of people suffering because of it i see it as a very very good sign it is a sign of fear and desperation and panic on the part of the parasites they have given up the only battle that matters which is the battle of ideas and they are jumping to brute force no empire will ever survive long on brute force when the subjects stop believing in an obligation to bow, that empire is doomed. There's a famous saying, there's lots of different variations. Uh, I guess my favorite very, uh, version of it is, all the armies in the world cannot stop an idea whose time has come. And the idea of self-ownership, of voluntary society, no masters, no slaves, it's time for that idea, I would say. Woohoo! And I want to end by describing the tyrant's biggest fear. And some of you may have heard me do this before. It is not bombs and guns. It is not revolution. It is not a civil war. What they most fear is not to look out their windows and see people protesting and complaining. What they most fear is not even to see 
a bunch of people with pitchforks and torches saying, we want your heads on a platter. I will describe what they most fear, and it is what I foresee for them in the hopefully not too distant future. The control freak who stands there, my word is law, I am authority, you must obey me. And the response is not shouts of anger. The response is not threats, it is not people throwing stones. It is dead silence because no one is there to hear them. Because humanity has grown to the point where we know we own ourselves and we are beholden to no master and let the politicians and the bastards who run this thing stand in some corner muttering to themselves like lunatics about how important they are and how powerful they are and the rest of the world can just freaking ignore them. Woo! So I would encourage you all, one, make sure your mind is free. Two, do whatever you can to help free the minds of all the other people who suffer from the mental disease known as authoritarianism. Three, resist and disobey in every way you can the people in power, but most of all, ignore them and live your life. Somebody else has something to say. Where are they? Where are they? Oh. Ignore that authority. I'm the authority. I proclaim to back down, buddy. This will take a moment, apparently. <laughs> You're in trouble now. <laughs> this has been a test. Well, hi, I'm Josie.